May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. <clears throat> Not all of us are as lucky as Saul or Paul. Lucky in that he had a direct and dramatic experience of the risen Christ. Now, of course, Paul did not know the person of Jesus. This experience of Jesus happened much later. And his experience was a blinding light which knocked him off his horse the voice of Jesus asking Paul why he is persecuting him, and then clear instructions about what to do with this new information. I am sure that it was a terrifying experience, and being blind for days had to be terrifying as well. But nonetheless, it was transformative for him, and also ultra clear. There were no questions about what happened to Paul on that road to Damascus and it changed his life. Maybe you have had a Paul-like experience of the risen Christ, but I suspect most of us have come to faith and maybe are still coming to faith slowly over time. We are probably more like Peter, whose faith is enthusiastic in some moments and then completely absent in others. The Peter of today's gospel has not seen Jesus since he denied Jesus before Jesus' crucifixion. And so when Peter realizes that it is Jesus on the beach, he puts on clothes because he is naked and then jumps into the water. It's such an emotional reaction. In his following encounter with Jesus, he realizes that not only is he forgiven, that's not even an issue. He is also given responsibility for tending to the followers of Jesus. There is much that we can glean about our own experience of faith and developing faith from both of these stories of conversion. With Paul, the dramatic nature of his conversion yields several weeks of blindness. He was literally in the dark. What he had been so certain of, what he could see so clearly, and of course that was that Christians were bad and needed to be um, eliminated, that was taken from him in this experience of the risen Christ. In his blindness, his sight is directed inward in prayer until it is time for him to see again with new eyes, new vision, new perspective. <clears throat> Consider your own relationship with God. Where are you in the dark? Where are you blind? What certainties in your life have disappeared? And in what ways has God restored your sight, offered you new eyes, new vision, new perspective? From darkness to light, from blindness to sight, this is part of our spiritual journey, our moving toward God. Peter, in his moving toward God, noticed his nakedness, and clothed himself before jumping in the water to get to Jesus. Now, how many times have we gone through something similar, and I mean metaphorically similar? I can be closer to God when I learn the right way to pray. Or I will know what it means to have faith in God when I am a better person. or what I know so many of us, including myself, can easily slip into thinking. If only I hadn't have done this thing, then I would be worthy of God's love. This kind of thinking is like Peter putting clothes on over his nakedness. But Peter learns that it isn't necessary 
there is no reprimand from Jesus, no need to review past hurts and offenses, no need to do anything to earn God's love. Peter is received exactly how he is. There is only the offering of love, as symbolized by the presence of Jesus and by this breakfast that's cooking on the fire. Then Jesus asked Peter three times, do you love me? And three times Peter responds, yes, Lord, you know I love you. And Jesus tells Peter to take care of the people that Jesus cared for. This too is part of our spiritual journey, to recognize that our humanity, our flaws and mistakes and foibles and even our greatest God-denying sins are of little consequence to God. What God wants from us is an answer to God's question to us. Do you love me? Ask yourself, do you love God? In what ways has God asked you this question throughout your life? I can think of many different ways God has asked me this question, and I haven't always known the answer. Mostly, the answer I've come up with is, I want to love you, God, but I don't know how. When we can just offer our love back to God without qualification, say, yes, God, I love you, when we are asked this question, the how of how to love God will become clear. I have a feeling that the how for most of us will not be something radical, but something very simple, just as it was for Peter. When God asks, do you love me? And we respond, yes, God, I love you. The next part of the dialogue will be just like it was for Peter. Love and care for what I love and care for. The whole of creation, including and especially the people in your lives. Really, the whole of our spiritual journey, from blindness to sight, from fear to faith, from feeling unworthy to knowing ourselves as completely loved, is a journey of love. Love given and love received. As was the case with Paul and Peter, our first step in the spiritual journey of love is knowing ourselves as loved by God just as we are, without doing a thing to earn it. We take this first step over and over again in our lives. We have to, because we are so good at making love something that is given because it is deserved. In reality, the love of God is grace given because God can do nothing but love us. God's love for us says everything about God. When we can receive this love and know ourselves as loved, the how of loving God will take care of itself. It's very simple. Just as God cannot help but love us, when we receive this love, we will not be able to help but love each other. <clears throat>